and I'm going to give you an introduction today to the course that I'll be teaching at the conference series, um, BPM and Six Sigma. I'd like to introduce myself briefly. I'm the principal consultant of my own consulting firm, uh, Marvin Wurzel and Associates. We specialize in um, projects that relate to both BPM and Six Sigma. Uh, I am a, master, a certified master black belt, and uh, so I've got a great deal of experience with Six Sigma. And one of the areas I think that becomes very important is using the combination of both of these methodologies to be very successful. Um, I do projects with some very large um, corporations. Uh, and basically, we try and apply the Six Sigma tools to improve processes before they go in and automate them. Because making more errors quickly is not necessarily the right solution. So a good analysis of the process before process improvement methodology used um, to improve it, and then you go ahead and automate it. So um, there's a nice course summary here on this, um, on this particular slide. It gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're all about. The course itself is structured in a way that we've segmented into um, several different large chunks. One is an overview of business process management, a um, little what I would call it BPM 101. It talks about um, what the basics of business process management are all about, creating process inventories, um, process mapping techniques, some basic uh, ideas there, creating um, different levels of process maps, metrics, uh, and then, then becomes the need for improvement as we look at the metrics on the process strategy-wise. Um, then we decide, do we need improvement? And what we'll talk about for the bulk of the day, probably three quarters of the um, one-day class, really is about how to use Six Sigma as your process improvement methodology. So, and Six Sigma, it's been around for a while now. It's very widely accepted, certainly in uh, larger corporations throughout the United States. Um, very typical. It's, um, it's not new. It's been around for a while. It's techniques that have been refined and basically repackaged into a methodology. Uh, that's proven to be very effective. Many corporations claim uh, savings into the billions and billions of dollars at this point. Uh, but the fundamental concepts have been around for uh, many, many years. In three quarters of the day, uh, going over what Six Sigma is all about, the basic uh, tools and techniques underneath Six Sigma, uh, the structure that Six Sigma um, organizations apply, how it's applied, um, and how effective it is. We'll look at some examples. Uh, we'll look at some of the tools in a little more detail. And at the end, you basically are at the point where you could make a choice to say, hey, that is the way that we want to structure our improvement activities. If we move ahead here, this is just some very high-level bullets here. But basically, what we're going to look at, as I said, uh, the basics of B BPM, uh, the assumption is actually that you've taken some of the earlier BPM courses, like BPM 101, is kind of a, kind of set the baseline for your knowledge. But just a, a quick round of the fundamental concepts, the mathematical concepts that underlie it, uh, the relationship between process management and process improvement. We'll, uh, we'll look at that. We'll, we'll look at how BPM and uh, measurement systems will lead you to finding the improvement opportunities. And then from that, we'll move into the basics of Six Sigma. We'll look at three variations of uh, how Six Sigma is applied. There are three models, Demaic, Demadvi, and Lean. Uh, that we'll look at. Lean is basically looking at the non-value added work in the process and getting rid of the steps that, that we can figure out uh, do not really add value to the, for the customer and for our, for our enterprise. 
The DMAIC model really stands for define, measure, analyze, improve, and control, process improvement. And once you get dig into the processes, you look at segments or large portions of the process, and these are uh, the, the fundamental process is good, but you really want to get in there and make some improvement. So that's the model that's used. We'll look at, we'll step our way through that model, and the bulk of the day will really be on that. Uh, we will do some work with Lean and look at a couple of examples in Lean. The third method that I mentioned earlier um, is DMADV, which is define, measure, uh, analyze, design, and verify. Now that's where you've got a process that's um, so poor or so bad or so undocumented that you've got to replace it. Uh, this is pretty much what people used to call re-engineering. We've got to dump the old one but we've got to uh, put in place a new one. And we'll look at some of that. We won't get into detail, the technique, and uh, what the focus is there. But we'll spend the, the, the bulk of the day looking at the DMAIC process. We'll run through that cycle of what a project would look like, what tools get applied. We'll look, uh, there's a lot of statistics applied here, because the primary thing that we're trying to do with Six Sigma and with DMAIC is to minimize variation. It's that old bell-shaped curve, and the narrower we make that curve, the more we can minimize the variation, the more predictable and stable the process will be, and that will allow us to run more efficiently and more effectively. And we'll show how that works. We'll see how uh, that helps save money, makes us more efficient, there's less rework in the process, less redoing things, uh, less waste, and so on. And this, um, you know, many people think that Six Sigma is a great thing in the uh, manufacturing world. Um, nowadays, it's everywhere. The transactional world, uh, people have jumped on this because they understand it works. It doesn't really matter if you're making widgets or you're processing mortgages or you're, um, you know, doing insurance policies. Any kind of repeatable process is, is a good thing to apply this to. So we'll look at the cycle there. We'll look at some real world examples of uh, how it's done. We'll kind of step through a couple of sample projects uh, at a high level to see the things that are done. We'll look at the tools, uh, the statistical methods that people use today. We'll look at some of the software that people use uh, to do these things. And then at the end of the day, we'll do kind of a, a recap of um, experience, and we'll look at how the two really do fit together, business process management and Six Sigma, uh, why there's a lot of synergy there, the, um, I guess, programs in BPM and programs in Six Sigma where they don't talk to one another, where, they, where they've uh, worked in separate territories, and how you can actually work the two as, uh, as a good set that uh, actually have a lot of synergies and fit together quite nicely to make your, your business as efficient and as effective as possible. So we'll look at lots of real world examples. Um, I can tell lots of war stories because I've been doing this for about 15 years now, and um, hopefully you'll gain a, a, an understanding and a feeling for how this can apply in your business. Um, you know, I've had uh, been teaching this course now for several years. Uh, people seem to really enjoy it. They get um, a good feeling for where the two fit together as a helpful tool. Um, once again, I like to sprinkle in a lot. Of, uh, I'll give you some theory. I'll show you how it's supposed to work, and then we'll talk about why it works, where it doesn't work quite as well as it should, and uh, how to be very practical about going about it, because I'm a pretty pragmatic guy. Um, this is part of the uh, certificate uh, training courses through bpmiinstitute.org. Uh, we do this at the conferences around the country, Chicago, Washington, New York, San Francisco. It's also available as face-to-face -face training or in-house training. Um, so it's um, your choice. If you'd like to pursue it further, we're also part of the uh, consultant network at bpmiinstitute.org has. Thank you.